topping our news chat tonight. We are still on the back to school season and we shall shine the spotlight on Bonge, Kumba and Kambe all in the northwest and southwest regions of the country. How are security measures being enforced to ensure a hit free academic school year? Answers in this newscast. Plus, another field attempt to rally Cameroonians to the street has been what the Cameroon Renaissance Movement Party witnessed today in Douala. Rompuan, Dokoti, and other spots have been relatively calm. Peter and Socie with more in this newscast. And another polio vaccination campaign is set to take place in Cameroon from the 9th to the 11th of October. 2020. Those are top stories. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for joining the 6 p.m. newscast on Spectrum Television. I am Josephine Binzi. As announced in the headlines, the protest called by the Cameroon Renaissance Movement and its allies was a big flop in the economic capital, Douala. The population went about the activities hitch-free, though here was there was a visible presence of law and other enforcement security personnel in some parts of the city. Pitan Socie has details. The Ndokoti runabout was in Beehive Mood Tuesday with commercial activities teaming. No sign of any protester, despite demonstrations called by the Cameroon Renaissance Movement and its allies. Motorbikes are crisscrossing each other as the area takes its usual state of urban disorder. Next stop, Dakar, the rallying point of today's protest. Here, security forces are not sleeping on their laurels. There's a heavy deployment of security forces with heavy artillery. But activities are moving hitch free as school items are displayed for sale. The village on the east entrance is also calm as the streets are buzzing with economic activities. The abortive protest comes at a time when key members of the Cameroon Renaissance Movement are in gendarmerie custody for instigating the September 22 demonstrations. While Maurice Camto's residence still has police and gendarmerie officers stationed there. And let's take you over to the northwest and southwest regions where we talk back to school. The 2020-2021 school year has kicked off in the northwest and southwest regions despite ghost towns which has characterized the two English-speaking regions and school boycotts from separatist propagandists abroad. Peter Associate took a snapshot of the school resumption in the northwest and southwest regions in this report. I am the first, so you made this back. Mm. Wow, wow. Nkambe and the entire Donga Mantung division of the Northwest region remain the glaring example of school resumption in the Northwest and Southwest regions October 5. Accompanied by the mayor and administrative authorities, the member of parliament for the constituency has empowered pupils and students for the 2020 2021 school year. Today, to advise to tell you that. You have to remain steadfast as you started today. Eh? Remain, nobody to stop you from coming to school. Like the mayor said, if anybody attacks the person, I just want to study. I'm not part of the problem. I just want to study. Just allow me to study. But the state has taken measures so, so that you remain safe and study. So now it depends on you. Tell your friends who are at home. If you stay at home, you become useless tomorrow. There is no way you can be a big person tomorrow without going to school. It was a similar atmosphere in Zan Division of the Southwest region, where the senior divisional officer and his entourage visited some schools. He is satisfied with the conduct of the school takeoff in Mundemba and other parts of the division. Not only are students in their classes, but some head teachers, principals, are also doing what they are supposed to do. We also recognize that the last academic year 2019-2020 was a remarkable one for Indian division. Students performed extremely excellent. In government school Bonge in Meme Division, 20 pupils answered present on day one of the 2020-2021 academic year. The teachers are determined to brave the odds. <laughs> We have recorded a very poor start. Nevertheless, the few who have come, we have started fully. As you can see from the other videos, they are already in class. 
learning have started effectively. And as I've started today, forward always, backward never. Day one of the academic year was also marked by ghost towns in some parts of the two English-speaking regions. But the situation has improved Tuesday. Authorities continue to urge parents to send their children to school. You want to go to school? Yes! Will you go back to the front again? No! The senior divisional officer for Meme Division, Chambaling Tuondong, who was on tour today to evaluate the effectiveness of the new school year. Schools like Cameron College of Arts and Science, Kaskumba, and the Government Bilingual High School, Kumba, saw a massive turnout where the affluence was poor in other institutions. The senior divisional officer was also on a security road check at the Mabonji neighborhood to vet the content of luggages brought in by passengers in his sphere of influence. Let's now listen to an excerpt by Catherine Coney. What I can say is that uh, there is an effective uh, resumption of school in the main division. I am very, very, very happy because finally the parents have understood that without school there is no future for their own children. We visited all the schools, teachers are available. Students are there, even uh, the, the parents themselves are there to follow up the kids. Let me congratulate them and to tell them that the state will continue to put at their disposal the necessary security to be, uh, to be sure that all the schools are running without any fear within the education. Yes, uh, I am going to give uh, this instruction. You know, last year, uh, we did not uh, focus our energy on that, just because the situation was a little bit difficult. But this year, I think that it's normal for them to wear their uniform. Because now in the school premises, you cannot know who is who. It's the time for us now to advise the, the parents to uh, buy uniform for their own students. Uh, the principal, very principal, the teachers are going to receive full instruction for the implementation of those measures which I think are necessary for us. Let's now talk business explosion in the transport sector. There is progress in the transport sector as some commercial bike riders tell our reporter Oni Ladonet giving the launching of the new school year. This claim is, however, not a rule of thumb for all, as some still say the ground is yet not fertile. Business is flourishing for some transporters here in the economic capital, Douala as a result of the resumption of the 2020-2021 school year. With today being the second day of resumption, these transporters affirm carrying more students between the hours of 7 to 8.30 a.m. Yes, For sure, during class hours from 7 to 8.30 a.m., we carry a lot of students. Yeah. Students climb on our bikes often. Business is booming. Others have complained of no change in the revenue generated. This has been blamed on constant traffic experience daily and the existing COVID-19 pandemic. We face too much traffic. Without traffic, we will walk well, but the traffic is too much. Our earnings haven't really changed. It has reduced instead. This is because when I look at it, we have a large number of parents and students who are scared of registering their children. Because the last school year was abruptly cut short. This year, yesterday I even went out at 6 a.m hoping to walk, but unfortunately, it wasn't the case, and it's still the same today. According to the Secretary General of the F. Bonaberry Loading Point, it is rather too early to evaluate the gains, judging that not all parents have registered their children. 
On ne ressent pas encore cela parce que, vous savez, avec les routes qui sont inexistantes... We still don't feel the affluence because, with the roads that are bad and the problems we face on a daily, school resumption is still timid because parents do not prepare as they used to. COVID-19 paralyzed everyone. We can't conclude yet. Vraiment, ça se fait pas trop ressentir en termes d'argent ou bien de rentabilité. Regardless, these transporters have decided to give priority to students every school day. A report uh, published by Ecomaten states that Cameroon would have lost 18 billion CFA francs between 2008 and 2017. This is an estimate of study on the issues carried out by a consortium of NGOs funded by the European Union. Catherine Kone with details for the 6 p.m. newscast. According to a recent study of September 30, 2020, by the African Regional Center for Indigenous and Community Development, Cameroon would have lost 18 billion francs CFA between the years 2008 and 2017 on its foreign trade, which is under illicit financial flows. The government says the gross domestic product, that is, the sum of the wealth created in Cameroon, rose to 16 trillion, 264 billion francs CFA in 2018, while in 2019 the same government estimated it at 16 trillion, 877 billion francs CFA. For this year, 2020, there existed a decline of minus 11% of the gross domestic product, while the Bank of Central African State forecast a decline of minus 29% this year. The country is expected to produce less than 16 trillion, 264 billion francs CFA in worth. The study stated that if the data from Cradec are correct, then a much higher amount than that has been subtracted from the Cameroonian economy in three years on its foreign trade item. It equally tried to relate this amount of losses to the country's public debts, which shows that Cameroon had lost values in international trade with its foreign partners. Faced with such a loss, the NGOs recommend that the government of Cameroon should include the reduction of illicit financial flows on the list of priority objectives of the reform of public finances, provide the National Financial Governance Reform Committee with a team dedicated to monitor the risks of illicit financial flows and also to strengthen the skills of the National Financial Investigation Agency, among others. On our international page, Republican Vice President Mike, Sp Mike Pence and Democratic Senator Kamala Harris have yet to meet on Wednesday in a debate that for many reasons will make much more interesting and watchable than typical presidential and vice presidential debates. Details with the VOA. It is considered the political undercard, the vice presidential debate. I think vice presidential debates often are more interesting to watch. The stakes are lower. The participants feel a little freer to say and do what they want. Wednesday's debate between Republican Vice President Mike Pence and Democratic Senator Kamala Harris has multiple storylines that make it more interesting and watchable. The historic nature of Kamala Harris's uh, uh, nomination and the fact that a woman of color, first woman of color on a major party ticket, will be debating. Geraldine Ferrara was the first woman to participate in a vice presidential debate, facing George Herbert Walker Bush, Ronald Reagan's running mate, in 1984. So I remember um, uh, there being tremendous concern about the way Vice President Bush should debate the first female on a presidential ticket. Um, and he could be, at times, a very competitive man and uh, certainly was a very good debater, knew his material very well, um, but didn't want to look as though he was bullying her in any way. In 2008, voters were eager to see Sarah Palin debate Joe Biden. The expectations for that Biden-Palin vice presidential debate were so great it's the only time in presidential debate history that the vice presidential debate outdrew, had more viewers than the top of the ticket presidential debates. And those top of the ticket debates were not snoozers because they included uh, 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 Barack Obama. 
uh, in terms of historic uh, uh, debates. Now, President Trump's COVID diagnosis is increasing already high expectations for the Pence-Harris debate. Vice President Pence was the head of the coronavirus task force. Uh, originally, Trump seemed to sort of take it over from him. Uh, but certainly, uh, the Harris campaign will be going right for Pence on coronavirus concerns and uh, talk about all the things that they think he did to not handle this as well as he could have. Mary Kate Carey is a senior fellow at the University of Virginia's Miller Center. She's got a reputation for uh, being a very aggressive questioner in the Senate Judiciary Committee. She's known for sort of laying these traps and trying to bait people to uh, respond. So she will be a very formidable debater, I think. Pence, on the other hand, is a pretty unflappable guy uh, to the point of sometimes not being very animated at all. The chances of him falling into any sort of trap are pretty small. Um, but I also think he's got, um, he's got an audience of one. His illness aside, President Trump is age 74. Joe Biden is 77. This vice presidential debate has future implications. If Mike Pence has another good debate in 2020, as he did four years ago, then that really helps strengthen his position as the Republican nominee in 2024. And the same with Kamala Harris, who's obviously you know young enough to have a long-term ambition here. But too much focus on four years from now risks losing sight of the main debate objective, defend the presidential candidate they are running with. I think that we'll see... Uh, again, uh, uh, Kamala Harris prosecuting why the, the Trump should not be returned to office and then Pence having to defend the record for the past four years. Uh, and so that, that will be, um, I think, an interesting debate to watch. The vice presidential candidates meet Wednesday evening in Salt Lake City, Utah. Steve Reddish, VOA News, Washington. And before we end this newscast, let's have this advertorial by Gas G. Cameroon. As the world continues to battle against the propagation of the COVID-19 disease, Gas G. Cameroon, an energy utility company, donated COVID-19 protective equipment to two state district hospitals situated around their zone of influence on Friday, October 2, 2020. The delegation from Gazji Cameroon headed by the Chief Financial Officer Elizabeth Burns on behalf of your Managing Director made their first step over at the Bonasama District Hospital in the Douala 4 Municipality. Here, safety face mask, bleach, hand sanitizers, cartons of washing soap and hand wash station buckets were donated to this health facility to support the medical staff who serve as modern day heroes on the front line of the coronavirus pandemic. This kind and warm gesture was received with gratitude. First of all, say thanks, great thanks to the management of Cameroon Gas because the gifts that they have just donated to us is going to go a long way to help us to fight against uh, the prevention and control of COVID-19. It is the same feeling of gratitude and recognition that the team from Gas to Cameroon received at the second stop over at the Lokbaba District Hospital in the Dwala 3 municipality where the same action was carried out. The director of the Log Baba District Hospital expressed his appreciation to Gasji Cameroon for this thoughtful action. We are happy to receive uh, that donation of Gasji Cameroon. The personnel of uh, Log Baba District Hospital say uh, thank you to Gasji Cameroon who have understood their hard work in the management of this pandemic. We are glad. As a fully integrated company in the energy sector, pioneering the production and distribution of natural gas in Cameroon, GDC stands together as a community to support the fight against the coronavirus pandemic in the neighborhoods which it operates in.
First of all, Gassi Kamun chose this particular hospital, or district hospital of Logbaba, because it's a hospital that is found in our zone of influence. Our process plant is located in Logbaba, and this is our way of saying thank you to the doctors and to the nurses who are doing a fantastic job on the front lines of this coronavirus pandemic. Um, our intention is to just lend our support and be a, a fighter, help fight this um, pandemic that, as you know, is affecting everybody, not just certain regions, but it's a global pandemic. And our intention, our hope, is that with these materials, these medical supplies, they'll be able to curb or prevent the spread of the virus further. Regardless of its principal status as an energy utility company, Gas to Cameroon is also committed to the growth and empowerment of communities as well as local stakeholders and pledges to continue supporting them fight against this deadly coronavirus disease in addition to promoting health and safety. Thanks for watching the 6 p.m. newscast. Join Orion Donkeng who comes up at 8 p.m. with more information in the French language. Keep watching STV for more interesting programs. Good night.